Okay, great. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you to all of you who joined. Um, this is our mentor orientation for 2021-2022. And once again, my name is Liz Resch, and I'll be your point of contact for the duration of this program. And you can also reach out to me with any questions after the orientation. All right. So um, our mentor program, we've been running it at Claremont High School for about the last 10 years. Um, we've had some wonderful success with our mentors and our juniors who participate. Um, it's one of the favorite things that I do here on our campus. And I was very disappointed when we were not able to continue with the program last year during COVID. So we are very, very excited to be bringing it back and bringing it back in person this school year. I always like to start with just a little bit of background on our school. For those of you who are not familiar with Claremont High School, I know some of you are returning mentors, some of you may have students who attend, and then some of you maybe just got roped in by a friend. So um, here at Claremont High School, we do have a unique approach to education. We use what we call um, the academy model. So we do have four academies on campus. They are aligned to an industry pathway. You can see them listed here, business, information technology, medical sciences, and engineering. And all of our students here at Claremont do participate in one of these four academies. They get to choose when they enter into the program um, in ninth grade. And then they do take courses that align to that academy industry pathway throughout their four years at Claremont. Claremont High is also a linked learning demonstration school. And what that means is um, we do have schools from across the nation that come and visit us and kind of look at what we're doing in our approach um, to education and take that back to their own school districts and um, try to uh, implement some of the things that we do here. So it's very exciting work. I'd just like to give a little background on what an academy is because you are gonna hear students talk about this um, in the mentoring program since it has been a really big part of their educational career here. So when we use the word academy, what we are talking about is, um, I really like this sort of depiction of a, of a, a house or a family, if you will. Um, so our students are blocked into these academies when they enter in, they get to choose which pathway they're in. And there's really sort of four main elements that make an academy an academy. And you can see them listed here as sort of the pillars of the house. First of all, our students are grouped together. And so if a student comes in expressing interest in the Academy of Health and Medical Sciences, for example, they are grouped with other students who are also interested in that pathway. And they um, take classes together. So they not only take their maybe health and medical sciences classes or their business classes, but they also take some of their core classes they need for graduation, such as English and history as a cohort together. And what we do there is they really get to know each other and become sort of a team. And that's important. They also stay together for their four years and some of their classes as well. That second pillar there you can see is the teacher team. And so our teachers work as an interdisciplinary team, which we love. So our science teachers, for example, and our English teachers, and maybe our business teacher are all forming a team. They get to know the students, they share the students, they write projects together, it's very hands-on. Our curriculum, you can see the third thing here, um, is sequenced. And so for example, if I join the Academy of Business as a student, I am taking a sequence of classes each year that builds in that pathway. I'm, I'm gonna start as a freshman with Business 100. I'm gonna take accounting my second year. I'm gonna take Business Financial Markets in my junior year. Um, in my senior year, I have the opportunity to do an internship and to also take, um, for example, a college class that might align to that pathway, such as our business management program with UCSD Extension. And so all that to say, um, the students that you're working with in the mentoring program are all in this. They're all in an academy and they all have sort of a focus to their education here at Claremont. And then the fourth pillar is where you all come in. Um, that is the most important one uh, for me and that is our industry partnerships. And so we are big believers in um, that it takes a village, right? And we have a lot of programs that not only integrate our industry partners into the classroom, but also take students out of the classroom. We run an intern program as well, as I know some of you are aware. Our 12th graders are actually all getting ready to start their internships on Monday. Um, they've been spending the last few weeks interviewing. We have an advisory board. We're constantly looking for guest speakers and people to come into the classroom and create job shadow experiences. So all of this is what makes up what we would call an academy here at Claremont. And so all of the students in the mentoring program do participate in this uh, model. All right, 
just a, a tiny bit more about the program as a whole um, and our, our campus, and then we'll jump into what the mentoring program is all about. So Claremont High is one of the older campuses in San Diego Unified. We were formed in 1960, but it wasn't until 2015 that we transformed to this wall-to-wall -wall academy model that I just explained. We do have about 900 students total in our program and four academies. Now, um, over the course of the four years here, we have 19 different career technical courses that we offer, which is the most of any high school of our enrollment. So we do really pride ourselves on that kind of career technical emphasis. We do have um, 120 uh, seniors who will be participating in our intern program. And then the mentor program, which you all are interested in, is about 200 juniors um, who participate. The reason I mentioned the intern program, and you'll hear me do so probably a few more times, is because this mentoring program was really born out of the desire to prepare our students for their internship experience in their 12th grade year. And so we purposefully um, started this mentor program in the junior year, knowing that our seniors would go on as 12th graders to that internship experience. In our mentor program, our goal is to get our student to uh, mentor ratio to about three to four students per one mentor. So as a participant in the mentor program, you would have three to four students that match up with you that would be your students for the year during the mentor program. Just a little bit of background on our students so you know the demographic that you're working with. You can see the ethnic breakdown listed there on the screen. We're largely a, a Latino Caucasian population at Claremont High. About 60% of our students are on the free and reduced lunch program. So that gives you just a little idea of their socioeconomic. Um, we also have one of the largest special education and special needs populations here at Claremont High School, about 20%. Couple things that people tend to ask about our, our four year university enrollment is right around 35%. I always like to explain that number a little bit because people see that and they kind of think, oh my gosh, that seems kind of low. And then I explain that that's not our acceptance rate, that is our enrollment rate. And there has been a huge trend, especially in the last five years, um, for students to go to community college ever since our local community colleges started offering the um, college promise, which is a uh, free two years of tuition at Mesa and all of our um, local city colleges. And so we do have about 60, 65% who get um, admitted to four-year universities, but a very large percentage of those that choose not to, to attend um, and choose and enroll in a community college and um, get at their four-year degree that way. So we have a very high community college enrollment. We do have a partnership with Mesa College, which makes it very easy for students to, to get enrolled there. All right, so our 11th graders, these are our mentees. Our 11th graders here at Claremont are the students that would participate in the mentor program. So what you can expect from them is that they have done already two two and a half years in their academy pathway. So they've taken some of those classes, like I mentioned. Um, so all of them are either in the business, engineering, medical, or IT academy. They have all elected to participate in the mentoring program. We strongly encourage them to, but they have to fill out a profile form just like you, and they have to go through an orientation as well. We do embed our meetings in the school day. And so our teachers prioritize these meetings once a month and they actually give up their class time so that students can come and participate in those meetings. And just so you know, the way you're matched, um, it's not random, the students don't choose, you don't choose. What we do is we take that um, very lengthy application that you filled out for us, as well as the student profile form and the teachers and myself actually hand read those and we make the matches. And so that is what we're trying to do is align you to students that perhaps maybe have an interest in your career field or just some similar personality traits and interests that we think will make a good match for them for the year. All right, so that's just a little bit of background on Claremont High School. We're going to transition now and talk a little bit more about our mentoring program. And so the information that I'm going to be going through right now is actually straight from what we call our mentor handbook. This handbook is um, a spiral bound book that will have all of the information that you would need for the mentoring program, as well as every meeting agenda, all the meeting activities, um, everything you would need for the year included in a booklet that will be given to you on the first meeting. 
You can also find the PDF of this handbook on our website. And I'll be sure to um, put that in the chat at the end here. So the mentor handbook, once again, if you wanna preview it and see all of the materials um, can be found on our Claremont High School website on the same page where you probably found our link to register um, under our industry partners mentor program. We're gonna, so it looks like this, uh, if you find Thanks it. So all right, just a little bit of information to kick it off. Once again, uh, my name is Liz Rush and I'm your point of contact for this program. I have my contact information up here um, on the slide there if you want to jot it down. And so I am present at all the meetings. I don't just conduct the orientations, but I'm also, um, I will check you in at each mentor meeting on campus. I'm your go-to if you need to uh, let me know if there's an issue with anything. Um, I do not lead the meetings because you, the mentors, are going to do that with your mentor handbook but I am definitely the person um, who coordinates everything, who sends reminder emails out before each meeting. I'm the one who oriented all the students to the program. I send out calendar invites and all of that good stuff. So um, you will be seeing me throughout the year <laughs> if you participate in this program. So there you go. Um, I don't see it listed here, but I'm also going to go ahead and give you my cell phone number uh, if you would like to jot that down. I'm going to put it in the chat for anyone who wants it. And that number is really the best way to get a hold of me. Uh, my office phone is listed there, but I'm rarely in my office. And so the best way to get a hold of me is usually to text me as I'm usually running around campus. All right, a couple objectives. And, and this information that I'm going through right now is actually part of our orientation materials in our mentor handbook. So I'm giving you kind of a gloss over, but these are all materials you would maybe want to read through prior to Thursday in the handbook. Um, the first like 10, 15 pages is what I'm referring to right now. The objective of our program, um, obviously a mentor program, it kind of speaks for itself, but our goal was to build um, uh, professional role models for our students. Our students have a lot of role models in their lives. They may have great parents and coaches and teachers, but that sort of professional relationship is something they don't get a lot of experience with. And we definitely wanted them to have that before they go out into the world of internships. And so that was a major goal for us in creating this program. We also would like our students to build their self-esteem and motivation and really explore the idea of what they want to do with their future. I mean, getting teenagers to think past Friday is sometimes the challenge. And so um, we want them to have some built in structured time to think about these things. And we also really believe strongly in um, partnering with our community. We believe that the community is really important. We also want our students to value um, being invested in their community. And so for all of these reasons are why we began the mentor program. When we talk about what a mentor is, um, I like to talk, talk to you guys about what I usually tell the students, because for them, it's a sort of untreaded territory. When I explain to the students, for example, in our orientation, what a mentor is, I say, you know, this mentor is not evaluating you in any way. They're not grading you. They're not a disciplinarian, but they're also not like your your confidant. They're not your therapist, right? We're trying to learn how to have a professional relationship. So they are your they are your guide, they are a friend, they are um, uh, someone who's going to you know, be your cheerleader and someone to kind of open your mind and think about your future. And that is really the role, um, the specific role that we want you to play. We've seen a lot of benefits to our students from this program over the years. Personally, I can attest to students who at the beginning of the school year, I was very, very worried about whether they were going to even um, attempt to graduate sometimes. And at the end of this experience, I have seen some kids' lives absolutely changed and turned around. I have also seen, you know, smaller, um, not as, you know, uh, overt changes in students, such as just their confidence in speaking to adults and things of that nature. Our mentors have also expressed a lot of benefit. Um, I've had mentor after mentor come to me and say, wow, I just, I didn't know these kids were going through so much. And I just got so much out of learning their stories and many mentors and mentees who've kept in touch over the years. I even had a mentor telling me the other day, one of our favorite mentors who's been with us for many years said um, that he has kept in touch with so many of his mentees over the years. He's attended some of their college graduations, which I think is amazing. So um, that is big to us. When we talk about who should be a mentor, um, just anyone who wants to give back to the students, 
the one thing that I always ask of our mentors, I get kind of like a mama bear a little bit when it comes to making sure our mentors are committed to the year. And so the one thing I would ask of you is to make sure you really have looked at the, what the commitment level is and all those dates of the meeting. Um, we do schedule them out for the whole year. Um, the students are giving up class time. You're obviously giving up time from work and we, we want it to be a great experience for students. We would encourage you to think twice about the mentor program if you know, for example, that you're you know moving out of state in the middle of the year or if you have some major life change or you know you're I don't know in the military and, and going out to sea in a couple months we don't want to leave a student hanging um, and so it is a year-long commitment and we would hope that you would take it seriously as such so there I kind of described some of these things but this little checklist is kind of a good way to make sure now if you've looked at the meetings and you're like hey wait I got you know a conflict on that December meeting I know in advance we can work with you on that that's not a problem we can set up um, alternate meetings and sort of uh, makeup sessions and things of that nature but we definitely want you to be able to make the majority of the meetings and commit to the students for the year all right the effective mentoring relationship so um, one thing I like to reassure mentors is that um, there, there is always a, a period of sort of um, getting to know one another at the beginning of the mentor program. The students you'll be working with are all students in the same academy. That doesn't mean though that they're best buddies. And so there is a, a little bit of a team dynamic happening at the beginning. Those students have to um, become comfortable and build trust, not only with you as their mentor, but also with the other peers that are in their group. Um, so I like to reassure our mentors that you know, your role is really to kind of um, give them a lot of grace and to facilitate those meetings and, and get them participating in conversation. I'll also say this, the last year and a half has been rough. Um, our kids have had a really rough time and, and re-entering, you know, face-to-face -face conversation and school in person. Um, it, it's, it's not all going to undo itself overnight. And so I think the face-to-face -face contact and sort of the conversational skills are more important than ever right now because of everything the students have been through the last year and a half. Uh, I, I would also ask your patience and understanding that there may be um, some difficulties there because they are just not used to it, um, especially after being on Zoom for a year and a half. <laughs> One thing you will find in your mentor handbook uh, is a couple of pages talking about the developmental process of the mentor relationship. And so I'm not gonna go into too much detail in it here, but I would encourage you to look at it. The first stage is obviously in any new group is a norming phase, it's building trust, it's making students feel comfortable and affirmed um, in their personality. And then um, usually after a meeting or two, we reach a sort of a comfort level after doing some icebreakers and things of that nature um, where students are gonna open up to you and they are gonna trust you and sort of um, put themselves out there. And, and in which case you can do the same. So once again, in your mentor handbook, I would encourage you to look over these pages that are about the developmental process. A couple of helpful tips. Um, when we do our mentor meetings, we do do them in our school library. And the way it will look is we have um, different mentors at tables with different students. So there is a, kind of a large group dynamic, but you do have privacy with your, your small group. And um, you and your mentees are the only ones participating in that meeting. I don't facilitate anything. You would come prepared, having looked at our mentor handbook ahead of time and looking at those meeting agendas. We're gonna look at them in just a minute so you can get an idea of what we're talking about. You are the one facilitating the meeting with your students, um, but we do give you activities. So it's not as if we just pair you up and say, here's 90 minutes, figure out something to talk about. Many of our mentors have, have thanked us in the past for having something very structured to follow. Um, so there's really not a lot of preparation on your part. It's more of a familiarization with the agenda for that day and looking it over in advance. We also would encourage you to um, have some sort of contact with your mentees in between the scheduled meetings. And so what that might look like is a, a group text, checking in with students, sending them emails. Um, we've had mentors in the past who went above and beyond and Zoomed with or FaceTimed with some of their mentees um, to check in with them, attended some of their athletic events on campus or just done things of that nature. And so you are welcome and encouraged to do those things, although they are not expected. The time commitment from you is um, about an hour and a half a month on campus leading those meetings. 
One of the uh, communication barriers you may encounter with students is that they may be a little reluctant to talk at first. Um, that can be a number of factors. Some of our students, English may not be their first language. Some of our students may have another student in their group that they don't know very well. And so they're not super comfortable yet. Some of them just don't, don't talk to adults that often. They're used to like being on their phone. So all of those things um, we take into consideration and that's where you have to kind of really get the students to open up. And I promise you after the, the first or second meeting, they do so. We do have a contract. Um, you'll find it in the mentoring handbook and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna show it again in a minute on our website. But this is sort of our code of conduct, if you will, for mentors. Uh, I'm not gonna go through it right now, but you'll have a chance to look it over. And it is one of the things that we will ask back from you before you uh, mentor with us. So let's talk a little bit more about the overview of the structure of the program. So I already mentioned that the way we do it is that we usually pair three to four students uh, with one mentor. And those students will all be from the same academy. Our meetings are um, on the dates that you probably saw on our flyer on our website, starting with next, uh, or with this coming Thursday, I should say, October 14th is our first meeting with students. And then the times are delineated throughout the day for our academies. So if you volunteer at the 845 time slot, for example, you are working with our IT kids and our engineering students. That 1020 slot is our business students and the 1030 is our medical students. However, you do not have to volunteer. Uh, let's say, for example, you work in the medical industry. If that 1230 time slot does not work for you, please feel free to sign up for a different slot. Um, we do have kids in every academy with varied interests. And at the end of the day, it's not always about a career match. It's um, sometimes more importantly about sort of that personality match for our students and just getting them to connect with you. We do have a focus um, throughout the mentor program on soft skills, communication, goal setting, uh, future planning, things of that nature. And so you'll see a lot of our meeting agendas when we look at them in just a minute are aligned to those themes. We also um, are, are very aware of the group dynamic, as I've mentioned. So you are not only a mentor, but you're also a facilitator of conversation with the, that small group of students, as you can see in, in some of the photos here. The meetings are gonna usually be between 60 to 75 minutes. Um, the first 15 minutes, you are usually gonna come to campus to our library and the students won't be there yet. And I am usually there greeting you. We'll have snacks and refreshments and I'll just give a quick heads up on um, what the agenda is for that week and any announcements we have for mentors and things like that. And then the students come in a few minutes in and that's when you sit down and group off with them and conduct the meetings. All right, I'm gonna turn now to talk a little bit about some of our volunteer paperwork. This is what uh, the number one topic I get questions about. And so I like to address it head on. Um, so they, there is gonna be some differences if you are a returning mentor. So I'm gonna bear with me. I'm gonna start with um, the assumption that we have a new mentor here and what we would need to do if I'm a brand new mentor to this program. So to be a mentor with Claremont, um, you also have to become what's called a, an official volunteer with San Diego Unified School District. And so a couple of the things that you have to do, um, we're gonna go through right now. First of all, our volunteer um, coordinator is here on campus. Some of you may even know her. Her name is Ms. Heidi Fulton, and she is in our front office, and she is the person who can answer questions about the volunteer application and also will be the person who will collect that packet from you. The uh, packet includes some of the following things. All volunteers with San Diego Unified have to um, show negativity for risk to TB, or, all, or show a negative TB test if you've done that for a different job. The assessment questionnaire is very simple. Um, it's linked here and also on our website. Basically, you have to get a medical professional to ask you five or six questions that assess how, how much at risk you are for tuberculosis. And if you can answer no to all those questions on the assessment, then that medical professional can sign off saying that you're not at risk and you get to forego the TB test. We do have a school nurse on campus. Um, I have our contact information later here who is willing to sign off on that for you. And so we'll look at that in just a minute. Um, we also need all of our volunteers to pass a live scan background check uh, in order to be alone with students. Now, 
The uh, being alone with students doesn't really occur until later in the mentoring program when we ask you to take your students on a field trip day. And so the first meeting, I know I get a lot of anxiety from our mentors. Wait a minute, if I don't get this taken care of by Thursday, can I not attend the first meeting? Yes, you can attend the first meeting. We would just ask that you get this in process as soon as possible, this background screening. It used to be that San Diego Unified required you to go down to their volunteer screening office for live scan. That has changed this year. And so now, um, you may get a live scan at any agency. We have a form that you take with you that I'll show you in a minute. And you just have to um, show clearance uh, and bring that form back to us showing the clearance. And then there is a volunteer code of conduct that you have to sign as well. So a little more detail about each of these items. The TV test, like I said, the easiest way is to um, fill out the TV risk assessment questionnaire. And again, um, any medical professional can sign it and no test is needed if you answer no to all the questions. If you would like to utilize our school nurse who is a registered nurse, um, she is on campus every day from 845 to 335 and she loves our mentor program and she already expressed to me that um, she's happy to sign off for you. You can either email her, you can see her emails listed there. Um, or you can walk in and if she happens to be available, it literally takes like two minutes for her to assess you and sign off. So that is one option. Also, if you've had a TB test that has been negative in the last couple of years, you can also turn in proof of that and that is also good. If you are a returning mentor, you do not need to do this again. So if you have um, done the assessment for us uh, it, it, two years ago is when we would have had our last program. Um, or if you have the negative test, you're good. You do not need to do this again. Live scan. So once again, live scan um, is your background check. And we do need to do this if we're a brand new mentor. Returning mentors, you do not need to do this again. Our volunteer coordinator has informed me that you do not need to rescan. But for our brand new mentors, you will need to do this. Um, once again, on our website and also linked here, you will find the form that you need to take with you. It's called the Request to Conduct Volunteer Screening Form. And so you're gonna take that with you. And then we have also provided you some alternate locations for LiveScan. To be honest, our San Diego Unified LiveScan office is not very responsive and is um, usually very, very booked. And so I would encourage you to consider going elsewhere for your LiveScan. It would, it would honestly just be easier and quicker for you. So um, all of this information, once again, can be found on our website, and I am going to put that link in the chat in, in just a moment when, we're, when we wrap up. And at the end, I'll also be taking questions, so feel free to hold those and we'll get to them, I promise. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about what we actually do at these mentor meetings. Um, this is the fun part, right, where we get to talk to students and, and interact with them. So on our first mentor meeting, October 14th, which is this Thursday, um, it's really about introductions. We do an activity to match up with students and I'll just show it really quickly. I'm sure some of you have played this game before, but we, we slap a, a sticker on your back um, as well as all of the students and we have sort of big mingling experience where you introduce yourself to various people and you play that game where you have to guess what's on your back. So for example, if I had mint and chip on my back, I would be starting to walk around and ask individuals um, yes or no questions. Am I, am I a person? No. Am I a food? Yes. Am I a dessert? Yes. And I'm trying to figure out what I am. I eventually figure out that I am mint and chip ice cream. I'm going to take that sticker off my back and wear it once I figured it out. Well, the mentoring groups are going to be of a similar theme. And so other students are going to start to see, hey, there's a vanilla ice cream, a strawberry ice cream. Hey, this mentor over here is wearing the title types of ice cream. And that is how you are going to find who your mentor at match is. We make it kind of fun um, to try to break the ice a little bit with the students and the mentors. So that is the first thing we do is, is a little breakout activity. Once we have matched off, and I have the, the list as well, so you can always come up to me if you can't find all your students, but um, once we all find each other, we sit down at the tables around the library and we follow the agenda in our mentor handbook. And so that agenda um, is going to be very detailed. It's going to walk you through with directions um, for each activity. And what we do the first meeting is we allow everyone to go around and introduce themselves. 
and talk a little bit about themselves. Um, mentor would start, right? And then the students have an opportunity for a couple minutes each to share and just introduce themselves to you and the other students in the group. After that, we have an activity where students and you get to take a little profile of your communication style. And you can either do that in the booklet we provide, there's a like a paper test, a uh, little test you can take, or there's also a link to an online one that you guys could choose to do on your phone. And what it does is it gives you some results on what kind of communicator you are. And this is a great starting point. So after we all do that, we go around and share what kind of communicator we are based on our results. And that gives us sort of some common ground of like, okay, well, if you're this kind of communicator and I'm this kind, how are we going to, you know, make sure that all of us get heard throughout the year as a mentoring group. And, and then we ask all of our teams at the end of this first meeting to create what we call a team communication contract. And so you're going to facilitate leading students through um, talking about how you want to conduct yourself as a team. So for an example would be during our mentor meetings, do we want to all agree to put our phones down and put them on silent to make sure that we're all having good dialogue? Or do we want to make sure to um, not interrupt each other? Or are we all going to exchange phone numbers so that we can be on a group text and agree to um, touch base once a week between mentor meetings? Whatever you guys as a group come up with, um, that conversation is meant to facilitate laying down some norms, if you will, for the year. And that is, that is basically all we do at the first meeting. It kind of um, lays the groundwork, if you will. That's October 14th, so this Thursday. Um, November 18th, our meeting in November, just to give a quick um, broad stroke over the rest of the year, uh, is focused on SMART goal planning. So we ask our students to set some personal goals. We use the SMART goal method. If you're not familiar, it's in the handbook and everything you need to facilitate is in there. And um, then we ask students to refer back to these goals throughout the rest of the mentor program. So you're really helping them set some goals they can achieve this year. In December, uh, December 16th is that meeting. Uh, once again, you'll see the meetings are usually on the second or third Thursday of the month. And the time will always be the same. It's whichever time you registered for. Um, in December, we do what we call a post-secondary panel. So we're going to actually ask you as mentors to choose a panel to sit on. And we're going to divide you up around our library space and ask, allow students to choose a panel that they want to sit on and, and have them do some Q&A with you around some of these topics. So you get to share some of your personal experiences with um, what you did after high school. In January, the theme is what we call roadmap interviews. And so here we allow students to um, interview you in a more personal way about what we call your roadmap. And what that means is they're gonna ask you, how did you get to what you're doing now from when you graduated high school? And all the twists and turns and um, positives and negatives that occurred along the way to get you to where you are now. And the students actually create a little presentation about you. Um, based on the information they get. And then we turn, uh, we flip the script, so to speak, and we ask students to think about their roadmap and what they want to do with their lives in the next five to 10 years after they graduate. So it's a really fun activity in January. Now in February, uh, listen up return mentors, because this is new. In February, we conduct um, our job shadow experience, which I'll get to in a minute. But at the request of some of our uh, veteran mentors, we are also going to host what we're calling a mentor mingle. Now this will take place um, in place of a February meeting. It will be on campus and during the regularly scheduled time. So it'll feel like a regular monthly meeting, except that there will be no students on this day. Instead, we're gonna have what we call a mocktail party. <laughs> and we're gonna allow mentors to network with each other and talk about your mentoring experience. We're kind of halfway through, plan that job shadow experience and, um, and really just talk about how the mentor experience is going, that some of the staff will be there as well to hear your feedback. And so this is something we have added to the program this year. And it should also be a lot of fun. Our Claremont High Foundation is gonna be um, bartending the mocktail party for you that day. It should be a lot of fun. And then also in February, we have this very special experience where we ask you to plan a one day field trip for your student group. And there is a lot of leeway on what you guys do here. Some mentors like to bring students with them to work and job shadow for the day. 
other mentors in the past have chosen sort of a, a group destination, such as a college that they want to take their students to that the, the students have shown interest. Some of our mentors in the past have um, really gone the extra mile and talked to their friends and networks and set up like a one on one for each of their four students so that each student has a day where they can job shadow someone they're interested in. It's really, um, there's a lot of flexibility in terms of what you and your student group want to do with that day. The only parameters are we ask you to do it in February. Um, we ask you to think through all the logistics ahead of time so we can have permission slips for the students. You register your trip on a form that I give you later uh, and all of that good stuff. But it is amazing. And I have to tell you that this is the part of the mentor program that our students and mentors usually talk about the most. It is awesome. And then in March, um, we do a, a meeting that we call future planning. This is very strategic. Our students are getting uh, well into um, uh, close to the end of their junior year where there's a lot of planning that has to start taking place. So this is right before our spring break and a lot of our students have a week off and we encourage them to think about during spring break, during summer break, what, are, what am I gonna do with myself? What should I be doing right now? Should I be looking for a job? Should I be trying to find an internship for next year? Do I wanna take some of my time over the summer and visit colleges up and down the state of California? Do I need to start um, researching you know, college applications? We encourage you to help them have this conversation about um, not wasting their time that they have off and, and doing some constructive things to get ready for their senior year, which is a big one. In April, we have our students work on resume and interview skills with you. Uh, now, usually in April of junior year, our students would all have a resume already because we did an activity with them in the 10th grade that we call mock interviews, which is a fabulous thing where they get to create a resume and do all these workshops and then do this like fictitious one-on-one uh, -on -one job interview. However, we were not able to do that last year with COVID. And so, um, it may look a little differently this year. Some students may have a resume, some may have a very rough uh, attempt at a resume, maybe not quite as polished as we've had in past years, but still an important skill for them to learn. And then um, we ask mentors to do some interview practice with them so you can actually do a few sample questions that we provide with your students and show them some of your techniques when it comes to interviewing. And then in May, we close. Um, we usually do some sort of hosted banquet in May for our mentors and students. We have uh, a chance to kind of affirm each other, look back, talk about the goals that we met and recognize each other. And there's lots of thank yous and sometimes tears and um, uh, just a lot of excitement around everything accomplished for that school year. So that is um, the big picture. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with this and I'm going to show you where to find some information on our website and take questions. We are still looking for, and you may have even seen my email go out, some of you. Um, at this time of year, we've usually uh, placed all of our mentors, but we are realistically still looking for maybe two to three more individuals. If you know anyone else who would really like to do this, um, I know it's a little bit short, short notice and turnaround, um, but we have, uh, we would like to keep the ratio of students to mentors low. We feel that that's beneficial. And so if you have any other friends who'd like to participate, I am recording this session today. I'm gonna to be posting it on our website. And if another mentor would like to come on Thursday, as long as they reach out to me, fill out the application and, and watch this orientation, I am okay with taking another mentor or two if they registered today. So I'll just throw that out there <laughs> for those of you who might want to hit up a friend. All right. Um, I'd like to take a moment now and show you where you can find um, a lot of the things that I referred to in this orientation. And then I am going to take questions. I'll, I'll end the recording and take some questions. So um, I'm going to take us now to our Claremont High School website. If um, I'll start at the homepage and show you kind of how I navigate there. So if you um, Google Claremont High School, it has an I in it, FYI. Uh, Claremont High School's homepage, some of you've probably visited here already to find out about the program, but underneath the industry partner tab, underneath mentor program, this is where you're gonna find everything that I've been referring to that will be of use to you. 
and I'm just going to point out a few things. So first of all, if anyone else wants to register for the program, this is that mentor application profile that many of you filled out already. I will say this, if anyone is on the Zoom today, maybe someone roped you into coming and you have not filled this out yet, I would ask that you please, please complete it today because we do use this profile to match you to your student group. And that matching process is actually happening tomorrow. And so um, I would need you to do this today uh, in order to participate. And then um, if you look down here under the heading process to become a volunteer, all of those forms that I refer to that you need for, like I said, um, volunteer screening, everything about the TB risk assessment, all of those items you can find here. I'll just show you, for example, really quickly, that request to conduct volunteer screening form. This is the form that you would print out and take with you um, if you go to be live scanned at any agency. And so that is linked here. Um, you'll also see um, that we have linked some of those locations for live scan that I mentioned. So they're linked here. Just gonna poke at a few of these so you can see there's a bunch of different places listed here. Um, that TB risk assessment is also located on this page. I'm not gonna click on it, but you can see it here linked. And so all of these forms are the ones um, that, you would, that you would want to take. Um, the live scan and TB test, I would encourage you to get in process as soon as possible. I am also gonna be providing a hard copy of all of these forms to any mentor who wants or needs them at our first mentor meeting. So I have those um, at the in-person orientations, I provided those, this is obviously virtual, but I can provide those hard copies to you. The mentoring contract that I mentioned that we ask all mentors to sign, you can find that here. Okay, and then here um, we have sort of that quick, quick hit list of printable documents that you can find. Uh, one thing I would direct your attention to that I would highly recommend you look at before Thursday is the mentor handbook that I kept referring to. So I'm going to click on that and show it to you now. The mentor handbook, as you can see, is listed here under the four mentors quick links. And it is the PDF of the entire handbook that once again, you will all be receiving on Thursday in hard copy. It's actually a spiral bound booklet that you get to keep for the year. But this handbook is your, um, is your Bible, if you will, for the year. It has everything you need. So the table of contents you can see has a bunch of orientation materials in the first 15 pages that you might wanna skim through before the session. And then all of the session materials um, all the meeting dates and everything. So I'm actually going to jump you down to the first meeting agenda just to show you what one looks like. I normally do this at the orientation in person. Um, and so I just want to flip through real quick and show you one for the first meeting. So when you get to the session materials, this is where you're going to find the activities and all of the sessions for the year with all of the dates. And then for every meeting, you will have an agenda that looks like this. And so you can see here, it has the meeting date. Um, and then every agenda will give you sort of the purpose of that week's meeting or that month's meeting, um, how to prepare for the meeting. And then each activity we would ask you to do with students is sort of scripted out for you in a lot of time. Um, and then anything that's referred to in here in terms of something to write on or any activity, you will find those activities included um, right after that meeting agenda for that month. So there's that communication style inventory I mentioned. Um, this is the results. You can see here that team communication contract we talked about. Okay, so everything is in there um, for each meeting. So I'm not gonna show you all of them, but I just wanted you to get an idea of how um, organized, if you will, the materials are so that you uh, it might take a little pressure off for you to know that if you look at this, you will be prepared um, for your first meeting. The other thing I'll mention, and this is new for our returners, one thing we are encouraging all mentors to do prior to Thursday, if you can, is to take a couple minutes and write what we would call an introduction letter. And I would suggest typing it so that you can run off several copies of it. And we just thought this would be great. Um, to be honest with you, this came out of a place of not only introducing yourself to your student, 
but also giving your students something they can take home to their parents. Uh, I'm a, a parent and I know that if a, my student came home and said, I'm gonna have a mentor this year, my first question would be, who is this mentor, right? So this mentor introduction letter is something that um, I think will really help you introduce yourself to the parents of the students, okay? So that's just a little bit of, um, of information there about the, the mentor handbook and where you can find all of those materials. So um, I'm gonna take questions in just a minute, but I, I first just wanna say thank you if any of you need to go. First and foremost, our first meeting is this Thursday, right? And so um, you would be coming at your assigned time. You registered for a time. If you are unsure about that time, you're welcome to check in with me and I can um, show you that in just a minute, uh, what time you registered. There are a couple of you that said you could do um, various time slots and for us to place you where possible. So I wanna let you know, thank you, first of all, that, that flexibility really helps us out with matching students and mentors. We are doing all the matching tomorrow. And so I will be reaching out to you tomorrow with your final time slot placement after we know which students we have placed you with. Um, so again, I will send an email out tomorrow letting you know that final time slot if you were one of the ones who said you could do either or. The rest of you are already scheduled into the one that you requested, okay? Um, so, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, stop share for a minute.